I'm your host of Good Morning Hebrew Home on Tuesdays, and today is Tuesday, Tuesday, May 19th, 2020. Um, going to be a really beautiful day outside. Uh, as soon as I'll be back in my car, and I can tell you more about that. Um, but I hope everybody's having uh, uh, a nice morning, and I hope you get a chance to get outside. We're working on a number of plans to get people out on a more regular basis, so. Um, be patient and um, we'll get to you because uh, as the weather is getting nicer, we want to get people out as, as much as we possibly can. Anyhow, today is Tuesday the, um, uh, the 19th. Uh, it's going to be partly cloudy today, 67 degrees. Um, Wendy and I were walking around this morning, feels very nice outside. Um, and uh, as you look out your windows, enjoy the beautiful splendor of the Hudson River. Um, this day in history, in uh, May 19th, Kind of a fun one, actually. For those of you who remember going to see the Ringling Brothers Circus, it was launched in 1884 today. Many of us have memories of being at the Circus of Madison Square Garden, different places with the lights that you twirled around and all the fun and festivities of the circus. So that started in 1884. 1935, from the sports standpoint, it was the beginning of the college NFL draft. Those of you that are football fans, and each year everybody gets very excited to see which teams are going to draft which players. That was announced in 1935 on this date and began in 1936. On the birthday standpoint, uh, Juana Valero, very happy and healthy birthday to you. I hope you have a wonderful day today and enjoy it. Um, from the menu standpoint, which was um, not shown to me, um, we went from bologna the first week, literally and figuratively, to Olivia, who's your host on many days, who's snorting, laughing in the background. Hopefully that's not caught on camera. That would be embarrassing. You don't want to embarrass another host. You also don't want to send a host in without the proper information. Well, they did. They sent me the list of the menus. Every day was listed for the host, except for Tuesdays. So Tuesday is the poor man's day. That's me. And my menu was handwritten to me, not formally sent to me. So let me give you the menu for today. All that being said. Vegetable soup today. We'll have some beef pasta and some cinnamon apple sauce dessert. For dinner, the minestrone soup, eggplant parmesan with linguine with garlic olive oil, and orange sorbet dessert. Are we having a technical issue? No. Keep going. Keep going. Everybody's huddled around pointing and making faces. Not good when you're on camera to see that distraction. And sometimes if you weren't an established host like myself in the years, <laughs> it might throw you off the bat, but I can handle it, not a problem. I think that concludes our introductory remarks because I have a very special guest with me today that I'd like to pivot towards. And her name is Ann Weisbrot. And Ann is the uh, Director of Social Services, but she's been a friend of mine, a, an advisor of mine, a colleague of mine, and a really important part of the Hebrew home for many, many years. So Ann, um, don't be nervous. Okay. If you're nervous, I get nervous, and then they take us off the air. Um, but it's a great opportunity for people to learn more about the work you do and your department does, and maybe a little historical perspective of the Hebrew home in general. So maybe you could give us a little bit of your background, what brought you into social services, which is a wonderful profession. We'll start there. All right. Thanks for having me. I'm so happy to be here. So I've been here at the Hebrew home for 33 years. It's my first and only job that I've ever had. Wow. So either I'm not going to change, I don't know what, <laughs> or I just okay. don't know what I'm, yeah. you know, I can't move. But um, I've been here for 33 years. I applied right out of grad school, came here. I was very close to my grandmother, who was in a nursing home. 
and I spent my whole life going on Sundays to visit her at the Margaret Teets Center for Rehab. So, uh, so I ended up here. I got an interview, got the job, and here I am. It's great. You know, we often joke, those of us have been here for 30 plus years, that one day, instead of driving home, we'll just take the elevator upstairs. I always say that. You know, I broke my ankle two years ago, and my husband said to me, just get a room, you can come home on weekends, and stay there for the week, they can take care of you. So Fran and I, it's often fun to reminisce and to talk about the history of a really wonderful organization that has, it was founded in, in 1917 in, in Harlem, and moved over to the 50s. Maybe you can paint a picture for the residents and the families that are watching us of how different things are today in terms of not only the physical environment, the way society treats elderly people. You know, they used to talk about organic brain syndrome, and there are all kinds of different definitions and names. Talk a little bit about how today is versus what was. So I think when I started here, at least, it, it was a little bit of a different feel. First of all, we didn't have the magnificent artwork and the magnificent, you know, with that grew over time. So from the physical standpoint of the home, it is so unbelievably more magnificent than it even was 33 years ago. But we didn't have as many um, defined type populations as we really do now. I think a lot of people came in a little bit younger, uh, sometimes a little bit healthier. Uh, they were able to get around. Now there's, you know, we have our enriched floors, we have dementia floors, we have, um, we're able to identify now, I think the needs of residents even more fine-tuned than we used to do because we have those services and those ability to care for those populations. I mean, back in those days, and there was really no assisted living, right? Home care was very different. People who were widowed or widowers came into facilities like this much younger, right? It felt more like an assisted living almost 33 yeah. years ago. I remember I started on SP2, and I remember the residents that came in. They, it was, it was an assisted living type feel, much less, um, you know, there were not as many people who needed as much care. And you look at the way elderly are treated in society, and not just the Hebrew home, but in the world. Do you feel that things are progressing from a social service perspective in terms of understanding the complexity of people living longer? Could you talk to oh, us about definitely. that? First of all, I have to say that when I was in grad school, I told them I wanted to do geriatric social work. And they looked at me like I was crazy because nobody else to do geriatric social work. Now I think from a social work standpoint, it's such a prominent field that people want to go into. There's such a more of an appreciation for helping the older population, for really recognizing the value and what we can learn from everybody, and just really, there's so many opportunities in social work and geriatrics that it's amazing how it's grown. I remember when I first met you, and you and I were on care teams, and we were two of the young kids on the block, mm -hmm. and it was sort of unusual for younger people to dedicate themselves, so. That's what I mean. I mean, I started here, I was not even married, I had no kids, obviously. I. Yeah, I was in unique in, in social work school. I'm telling you, they looked at me like I was nuts that I wanted to do geriatrics now. Thank God there's so many people that want to go into this field. So you mentioned being married with, with kids. Maybe you could just share with us a little bit about you personally. Sure. So I'm married, oh my God, about 33 years. Uh, we'll we'll add that to it so you knew exactly we're married. Right? <laughs> I know my husband, I can't let my husband watch tonight. Um, <laughs> November will be 33 years. I have two daughters. One is 28. She is living in the city. She's working right now from home. Her name is? Uh, her name is Allison, and she's, uh, she's great. And then I have a younger daughter, Julie, who's 22, who's right now living at home, just finishing school. And we'll get started, hopefully, on a job search very soon. Get the, out of the house. <laughs> of course, the world's a little frozen right now in terms of jobs and things, yeah. as I'm sure our, our residents and families understand things are not quite normal. Let's talk about that a little bit. And it, it doesn't feel normal. We try and create a normal for ourselves. We meet as a team every morning, as staff, and we try and create some normalcy and really an abnormal time. For the residents that are watching, for families, how does that work? How do you, how do they adjust? Can you talk to that a little bit? Uh, you know, it's been really unbelievable experience because one of the things that I'm really blown away by is how you, the residents, are really managing as well as everybody really is, without the ability to have family visiting, without the ability to go to the amazing activities that we have all throughout the home, going in and out, 
residents just are just accepting this, understanding, you know, they have been giving them a lot of support. But I'm really blown away by, by you guys, actually. Families are calling, they are reaching out, we've been reaching out to families, trying to connect everybody through FaceTime as much as possible. Um, it's, it's really been, uh, considering what's going on, I have to say I'm grateful that I have a job that I can come to every day to give me that sense of normalcy, and being here with the residents and dealing with the families gives us that sense of normalcy. And boy, you come to work every day. You and your department have been phenomenal. Um, to put past your own anxieties and concerns and to come and, and do the job that needs to be done. It's really commendable. Thank you. I'm, we're all grateful and happy to be here. And I'm struck by your comment about the residents uh, who we do the show for and their families. That I remember back when 9-11 happened and everybody of our generations were sort of unnerved by it. And, and the calmest people in the building were the residents who had lived through wars and you talk about that, that a little bit? That's really what I feel like. I, I was explaining this to my family, actually, because they said to me, the residents must be so anxious about this. And I said, I feel like they're giving us the ability, you, you know, you residents are giving us the ability to do our job so calmly because you're dealing with it in such a, so well. You know, you might have your own anxieties, of course, but there's some feeling of calm with the residents that gives us the hope that we're going to get through this. So let's talk about social work in a long-term care facility. So what are the core principles? What are the core functions of your department? And maybe you can talk about how you've adapted, like I know resident council you're going to do through automation. Maybe you can talk about the, the basic principles of the department. So our, our department really navigates and negotiates the entire system of the Hebrew home for both the residents and the families. We're, along with the nurse managers, we're kind of the go-to people. People come to us for almost everything. I joke that sometimes I'm a nurse, I'm a doctor, I'm, I'm not a dietitian, but I, I might be a nurse and a doctor. So you have every piece of chocolate known to mankind in <laughs> you your <know>. office. <laughs> yeah, and I tell you, you know, my diet's terrible. But, um, so people come to us because they don't know what to do with things, they have questions about everything, they don't know which department, they need help getting into, you know, information. Um, it's just they come to us for everything. They come to us to help them solve problems, to help them understand what's going on. And families do the same. It's, we're, we're really the go-to people, and I feel that we're here to provide support to residents, to families, to make sure that they get what they need, um, and to really just feel they're getting the best possible quality of life they can here at the nursing home. So if families are watching on YouTube and they have questions or concerns, they can reach out to your department. Anytime. Um, you know, we, we've been taking questions and calls from families about pretty much everything. We're trying to get answers for you uh, because we know the other disciplines are so busy doing what they're doing. So we're trying to be everything we possibly can be to everybody at the same time. Um, residents have been reaching out to us. We it's it's really it's helped us in some ways. It's a weird thing to say, but this pandemic has helped us to get to know the residents and the families in some ways even better than we ever did before because we are it for, for everybody. And I've been overwhelmed, and I'm sure you have too. We do the, the family webinar each week. Um, the trust and the support for families has really been palpable. Unbelievable. I mean, every day people call us, they thank us, they thank you know, the whole team. They, they, they're just so grateful that we're coming in to be with their relatives because they can't be. So. You know, we think of the challenges that are in front of us, and each day in our morning meeting, we talk about all things that are ahead of us, and all the, the regulations, and all the, the things that keep throwing us. We are testing uh, staff; uh, have to be tested for COVID twice a week now. We had to come up with a plan to do that. It just there seems to be resilience about this, the staff, and you know, just in the same way we've gotten to know the families and the residents so well, because we've also gotten to know each other very well, because. You know, we're all in this together, and the teamwork here is amazing. So I think everybody's really bolstering everybody else up to do the best job we can. So let's talk about resident council, if we could. How, how yeah. do you think you'll be able to achieve that? If people are watching, they're, they're on the resident council or want to be on the resident council, can you talk about that a little bit? So the resident council is one of my favorite things that I do here, honestly. It's a chance for me to get to meet with the residents, just hear what they have to say, get great ideas from them. After all, they live here, they know what they want. So we've started resident council back up. We did take a little bit of a hiatus. We're now doing it in this exact location. Uh, twice a month on the same exact schedule we do it. Everyone gets their invitations, but the benefit now is actually 
everyone can watch it because it's on TV. Um, anyone who wants to be on resident council, just let your social worker know and we'll put you on. Um, and we're doing it right here. We have guests. We do it exactly in the same format. We do it normally. Uh, we have a call-in phone number. I don't remember the number of him, but I announce it. They'll probably change it on the end. Oh, yeah, that's maybe. Um, I have to look it up every time I'm meeting. And residents have been calling in, and actually one of the nicest things that the residents have been calling in is to thank everybody for what they're doing. So, um, and we've had some great suggestions. Our chairperson, Delta Bassler, has, you know, given us some good suggestions that we're following up on. So we're handling it just as if we, as if there were no pandemic. One other thing that I think your department's involved with regularly is voting. Um, do you have any knowledge of how they're going to handle primary or, or the general election? Anything so you actually, share? they were here this week uh, navigating the space. Uh, the next election is due, scheduled for June 23rd. I think there's still some question as to how it's going to be achieved. But as far as we are understanding, we're going forward as usual. The only difference is that the voting is going to be in the Winter Garden instead of our usual great room. We're going to set it up in such a way that this social spacing between residents, we're not going to bring everyone down at the same time. We'll have to figure out the logistics of it, but we're, we're scheduled to have voting like we always do. Which is kind of a nice way to end. It's, it's uh, you know, an example of creating normalcy in non normal times. Your resident council continues, social service work continues, voting will continue, everything will continue. It's a little different. And those of us who are not outside for residents, I could share with you, and Ann could share with you, it's not normal to walk into the streets and see people wearing masks. And of course, we're not wearing our masks because we're just in this theater. But you know, you go out and shop or whatever. So it's not a normal time. But creating normal is really the key. It really is. And I, I again, I just want to say to the residents, to the families, I want to thank you guys for your support and just helping us do our job the best way we possibly can. And if you have any questions. Just call us. You can always call me if you don't know who to call. Um, we're here. We're here for you. We're here for your families. And I'll thank you, and not only for being on the show, but for really three decades plus of making a difference for people in their everyday life and their families. Uh, you really are one of the gems of this organization and, and really a big part of its history. Thank you. And working with David for 33 years. That equates to about 900 pieces of chocolate that are eaten in your office. <laughs> then while well, I don't advertise the chocolate, people may not be able to eat. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, we thank you all for tuning in to join us today on Good Morning Keeper Home. Uh, tomorrow's Wednesday, which is Wendy Wednesday. Wednesday, who do you have on tomorrow, Wendy? Moji. Moji, uh, who heads up nursing, will be her guest. So tune in tomorrow at 1030. We are discussing internally, you should know, the time slot of the show based on the um, broadcast quality while we're waiting for parts to come in. So it's possible, and I'll leave that to Olivia and others to, to think about what time, because I know you're all watching, if you're watching live, through not the best uh, camera situation, but we're working on that. In any event, we wish you a wonderful day. Enjoy the beautiful day, um, and thank you for tuning in and, and spending some time with us. Have a great day.